reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one in Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs. We acquire real estate. I don't invest in the stock market. Okay. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur as well as an investor mm -hmm. in real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I immediately invest it in real estate and I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate, I get four million from the bank. That's why I love banks. But the banks are screwing everybody else. You know, terrible, but it's good for me. Hello once again from the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. It is very funny, whenever I make a little comment at the start of the video, for some reason, people do not understand jokes. So in my last video, I said, if you're a real socialist, not some sort of Western champagne socialist, then you would live in Vietnam. Basically saying that no real socialists exist outside of Vietnam. And some people took a bit of offense to that. Some people blocked me on YouTube and unsubscribed. And some people left me essays. That statement is so insane that you can only be a socialist and live in Vietnam. Even according to that logic, like you have to live in a socialist run country to be a socialist. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm saying every socialist in Cuba isn't a real one because they don't live in Vietnam. Every socialist in China, just because you're socialist in America and Britain, again, I don't understand how you guys didn't see the joke. For future reference, guys, if something I say sounds so insane, you think I might be joking, then I probably am joking. So just all of that out the way, today we are going to be talking about billionaires. We're going to be talking about these YouTube channels which make motivational content on how to become a billionaire or a millionaire and talk about like various different lessons they give or even pseudoscience about how waking up at 4am gives you like superpowers to become a billionaire because I find this stuff really fascinating and also depressing that so many of these videos I'm going to play clips from have so many millions of views, people agreeing with this mindset. And basically what it often boils down to is rich people saying the only reason they are rich is because they have a rich mindset and poor people are poor because they have a poor mindset. And it's really as simple as that. If you wake up at 4 a.m., if you drink these weird smoothies, if you have a cold shower, if you get into this hustle and grind mindset, then you too can become very, very rich. I always love in these videos, they never talk about systemic problems of poverty, inequality, and how the fact they can only be as rich as they are because so many people are poor. Like they do not understand that very basic fact of capitalism. But when you are one of the winners, you are taking the profit from the losers and with a lot of millionaires and certainly every single billionaire, profits are stolen wages. Very, very apparent with companies like Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Very, very apparent with so many companies across the world that the CEO and board make insane profits year after year, even while wages either stagnate or even go down. It's pretty clear the profit is based on exploitation. But we're gonna talk about this a bit more in the video. I also made a video kind of about this back in January, I believe, but that was more focusing on like Gary V and this like fake motivational stuff. So go check that out if you care about that. But also before we go any further, please like the video and in the comments, I guess the question is, what is like the worst piece of advice you've been given about either like making money or becoming, I guess, financially comfortable. You're gonna hear a lot of it today. So let me know in the comments in your own personal life, what is the worst advice you've been given? Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I wanna build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible. And the benefits of that, again, access to my Nintendo Switch friend code and the Discord server. Patrons who are watching this, I've also posted something on Patreon yesterday about living in Vietnam and just about the exclusive content I'm going to post throughout my travels. So go check that out. And yes, if you're not a patron, I'm going to make exclusive videos just talking about like life in Vietnam and stuff. So if you care about any of that, maybe consider becoming a patron. So follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram. Instagram is where I'm posting lots about Vietnam on my stories and saving them all in my highlights. So again, if you care about my travels, 
check that out, please. Also check out the subreddit in the description and check out my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra. So I know about half the people watching this won't be subscribed to my channel. So maybe this is the first video of mine that you're watching. So maybe I should frame how I feel about billionaires first. Now I saw this video today and it was about an Amazon driver and he was quitting because I think he did like a 19 hour shift that finished at like 4 a.m. And then was being forced to go back in at either like 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. Doesn't really matter, it's insane hours. Guys, I'm an Amazon driver. I started my shift at nine o'clock this morning. It is now 4 a.m. I live 30 minutes away from the station. In case you don't know, as an Amazon driver, once you finish your shift, you have to pick up after other people's shift. We've been having people quitting all over the station. There's no people to pick up these routes anymore. I have to go back into work in less than five hours and do this shit all over again. But you know what? No. I've had enough. I'm not doing this anymore, Amazon. I quit. You've abused me for too long. I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm a good worker. People want me doing this job. They don't want me promoting. They they just want me in the same job doing this shit until I die. I, I refuse. I'm not doing that, bro. And like I was saying at the start of the video, billionaires' wealth is based on stolen wages. Like obviously, I'm an anti-capitalist socialist, but there are better ways to run businesses in a capitalist economy. Of course, I made a whole video about how capitalism is ruining the games industry. But in that video, we talked about worker co-ops, which made games like Dead Cells, which is very successful, very critically acclaimed. And of course, what happens is the profits all get split evenly among the workers for their pay. And the rest of it is put back into the company because these people just want to make art. And in the capitalist economy, this is both sustainable for them and not exploitative where one person is profiting off everyone else's labor. So in this more like social media age, there are examples of millionaires that aren't inherently, I guess, immoral. Like for example, I could become a millionaire through doing YouTube. Very, very unlikely, but I could literally do what I'm doing now. I don't employ anyone, I do everything myself, and I could become very, very successful like so many other YouTubers, make over a million pounds a year and stuff like that. And then you could say, inherently there isn't much exploitation going on. You have the dynamics of, you know, me kind of working for Google and YouTube, and of course the capitalist exploitation goes on in that company, but I guess that's the most moral way someone can become rich, I guess. But that simply doesn't happen with billionaires, and there is no like self-made billionaires. There are no billionaires who are moral because fundamentally to attain that level of wealth, you're basically saying your work that you put into the company, which is probably a lot less than other people, is inherently worth more. And you're not admitting so much of your profit generated is based on the exploitation of your workers. And also another dimension to it is billionaires are fundamentally immoral because it's anti-democratic. Having that level of wealth in a supposed democratic system is obviously extremely flawed because you have disproportionate power. And of course, in a capitalist system where rich people influence our politics so much, you can then start influencing politics and shaping society how you want it to be. Or in the case of people like Bill Gates, start buying up loads of land and privatizing loads of things, other people buying up loads of property. So you're essentially attaining a level of wealth that makes you pretty untouchable in terms of the law. So that's a short summary why I don't like billionaires. But this video is mainly deconstructing the mindset of entrepreneurs who are like worth hundreds of millions or people aspiring to be billionaires and how they think about the rest of us, how they think about how you attain that wealth and just the insane bubble they live in and the lies they tell themselves to kind of like justify pushing this as an aspiration. Like you want to become a billionaire. And a lot of what you will hear is like, they'll take these stories of like Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos. And they'll speak about how these people just had a great idea and that great idea caught on and they became wildly successful while also downplaying the economic privilege all these men had before and that's how they became rich in the first place so there's a video that came out four years ago called the millionaire mindset uh, by a channel called vybo and it's basically just taking tony robbins clips 
this weird grifter that I've only seen on a Mooncat video. I don't know too much about him apart from he's a bit of a con artist and he's like a motivational speaker. But anyway, in this video, he just talks about like the wealth mindset and how in a place like America, there is so much opportunity, it's actually pretty easy to become insanely wealthy. So let's have a listen to this clip. Because I'm gonna make a statement right now that may sound like an oversimplification to you, but I have to tell you that it's true in my experience. And my experience is how to shift myself and other people's finances from struggling to absolute total abundance. And that statement is this. If you do not have enough money in your life, there is one and only one primary reason. You have not conditioned yourself for wealth. First of all, when you talk about money, have you ever noticed what an emotionally charged issue it is for people? Where people literally have contempt for it, as if it was something evil or suspect, something that you should avoid at almost all costs. And that usually shows up, obviously, in their lack of economic well-being. So one of the questions that I've asked myself is why do so many people fail to achieve financial abundance? in a country where financial opportunity surrounds us literally at every moment. It beckons to us. And yet most of us never do that. We never create the financial abundance we deserve to have. We live in a country where people can generate net worths of 100 to $500 million, starting with a little idea for a computer in their garage. Or where somebody can go to IBM as a young kid and become a billionaire by his mid-30s, in the example of Bill Gates. So there are lots of role models of unbelievable possibility. The obvious question is, what is the number one reason why most people fail financially? And the answer is so simple that it eludes most of us. It's because we associate negative things to having excess money. In fact, the word excess by itself for most people is a negative. So I wonder why we don't ever have it. So framing like that is obviously ridiculous. Yeah, there is a lot of like, financial abundance in America. It is a society that glorifies destroying your fellow man to try and get ahead. And it is a society that glorifies being a con artist to try and scam people out of their money to become wealthy. I admit that, but at the same time, America is a very, very good example also of a capitalist economy where the divisions between class are very, very apparent. And it's very, very clear the wealth of the 1% in America is built on the backs of the workers in America. You see all these workers in America working for fast food chains that earn terrible, terrible wages. And the CEOs of those companies are held up, they're glorified. And again, their wealth is built on the workers. Their profit is built on the tiny wages they pay them. But America is a system that enables these people and allows these people to thrive. But the way Tony Robbins frames it as you have a good idea, there's so much financial abundance. It's probably a you problem. It's probably your mindset towards wealth. You're probably associating negative things towards excess. That's why you can't become successful. We could all just be like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos and we can invent things in our bedrooms, garage, college dorm room. It's there for the taking if you just have the mindset. So I just quickly want to talk about the myth about these types of billionaires first because it's always like, these guys are self-made. They had a brilliant idea, made loads of money. And he talked a tiny bit about like maintaining wealth. Even if they made this product and then sold it for a couple billion, they maintain that wealth again through capitalist exploitation and knowing how to play in this rigged system to maintain their wealth, which we're gonna to touch on a bit more with the next video. So I just wanna read this really good Twitter thread, which kind of debunks the notion about these people being like, self-made billionaires and anyone can be like them. So this thread by Aidan Smith was pretty good back in 2020. So uh, John Ehrlichman, on this day in 1994, Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos in his garage. See, anyone can do this. Uh, cute propaganda, in reality, Bezos's mummy and daddy gave him $245,000 to stop Amazon from failing in 1995. But you'd never know it from listening to our right-wing mainstream media that blames poverty on personal failure. You can find this in the backstory of almost every billionaire. The story of Bill Gates is told as if he was a normal guy who dropped out of college to pursue his dream, when in reality his mom Mary Gates, the president of United Way, convinced IBM to hire Microsoft to build an OS which is something Tony Robbins was actually talking about. Uh, Aiden also saying, Gates is a talented individual, but his career break wouldn't have happened if he wasn't the child of wealthy, well-connected parents who were able to convince IBM to hire the then obscure Microsoft to build an OS. 
He likely wouldn't be a billionaire if he was born working class. Even if you're not born to the mega celebrities, it really can't be stressed enough how much a leg up children of wealthy get even indirectly. Mark Zuckerberg's wealthy parents sent him to Phillips Exeter Academy, tuition almost $57,000 for boarding, and got software developer David Newman to give him private tutoring in computer science before he even entered college. Zuckerberg is, like others mentioned, an intelligent individual in his own right, but if he was born into a working class family, he simply wouldn't have had the same opportunities as he did. Remember, people took an it such an interest in Zuckerberg to begin with because he had already entered college with a reputation as a computing prodigy, which again couldn't have happened if his parents didn't hire a software developer to tutor him. The benefits of having wealthy parents, even if they don't give you a quarter of a million as Bezos has did, can't be underestimated. There is no fair playing field. So that was a great Twitter thread there and really ends with the debate that these billionaires really earned all their success on their own. And like they said, Mark Zuckerberg, clearly a smart guy. Bill Gates, clearly a smart guy in certain areas, but they would have never had the opportunity if their families weren't already rich. And in my opinion, the economy has only gotten worse for people. So you're not really going to see any Mark Zuckerbergs from a working class background or a very poor background. There's so many stories of billionaires simply already being very, very wealthy, which really goes against the notion that people are poor because of their poor mindsets and people are rich because they know something other people don't. Like many billionaires that we know, their wealth is inherited. They have a leg up. Elon Musk is another one. Donald Trump is another one. And most working class people will never have a hope of attaining that element of wealth because they are the people who create the wealth not for them, for this 1% who know how to play a rigged system. And on that note, there's a guy called Robert Kiyosaki. You may have seen him. I find him extremely gross. But what he does well is highlight how he plays the system to essentially enrich himself and pay no tax and glorify this as him being smart. You guys might remember this kind of like mindset with Donald Trump where people weren't mad, he basically never played tax because he kept going bankrupt and had so much debt. They said he was a genius for playing the system. And I was talking to my girlfriend about the Wolf of Wall Street film and just like how it's really helped with the rehabilitation of Gordon Belfort because people don't think about all the lives this guy ruined. They think he's smart for conning the system and pushing it to its limits. And that speaks so much to just how much America glorifies these types of people. Like Gordon Gecko is meant to be a criticism of this excess of wealth, but so many people like Jordan Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street, Martin Scorsese, they take them as aspirational figures and you should be like them and you should like their really infamous speeches which are trying to show how these two are terrible people. So let's get into a couple clips of Robert and we'll dissect what he's talking about when he's talking about how he created his own fortune, which apparently is like a hundred million dollars. Debt and taxes make the rich richer. Debt and taxes make the poor and middle class poor. So all the rich guys who are doctors and lawyers or, you know, those guys, they're getting creamed and they don't know why. Doctors are getting creamed. Oh yeah, they're making more money, but the take home is less. Sure. You know, I, I, my doctor just yelled at me, he was happy, he says, oh, guess what, I finally made a million dollars. And I said, yeah, this was just three weeks ago. And so I said, yeah, well, well how much you pay in tax? He says, 750,000 in taxes. Mm -hmm. So his net was about 400,000. That's not bad. But when I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one in rich dad, poor dad, is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs, we acquire real estate. I don't want to invest in the stock market. Okay. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur, as well as an investor mm -hmm. in real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I immediately invest it in real estate. I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate, I get four million the bank. That's why I love banks. But the banks are screwing everybody else. You know, terrible. But it's good for me. So for me, I can see the good and I can see the bad. I don't really give a damn.
because I'm going to be rich anyway. But a poor person with a poor personal economy, all they're going to see is a bad economy because they don't know how to make money in any economy. And a middle class person, they have a middle class economy. You know, they, what they want is a nice house, and a steady paycheck, and the job, and the car. And so when you take their job away to them, that's disaster. Well, since an entrepreneur doesn't have a job anyway, it's no big deal. I love how Robert revels in being an absolute societal parasite and acts like what he's doing is really smart and moral. Like he is so much better than all of us because he plays the rig system to make as much money as possible and puts no money back in to the system that's rigged in his favor. This is how entitled these guys are to your money, to your profits of companies they own. They will literally pay no tax. They will find ways around paying any sort of tax. Like he said, he invests his money in real estate to get an even bigger markup. But this video has 17 million views and 400,000 likes. Like people watch what this guy says and they think it's good. They want to be like him. And that is the horrible thing about capitalism. People often say to socialists, like, don't you realize that capitalism is human nature? And I reject capitalism and human nature. But something I do say is loads of people and maybe too many people have been brainwashed into capitalism, into neoliberalism, where they see a guy talk like this. They're not disgusted. They're not saying, oh my God, what a parasite. We need to change the laws. We need to you know, redistribute this guy's income, his wealth, because he hasn't earned it fairly. They're like, how do I become like him? How do I cheat the system too? How do I play this rig system for the 1%? How do I exploit 99% of my fellow workers or just general citizens to become a massive parasite like this and not worry about paying tax ever again and using debt and taxes, which ruins the lives of so many people, using that to my advantage because I buy debt to make money off debt and I don't pay taxes, so it's a win-win for me. You know, and even he thinks like a doctor is a sucker. Some guy who is doing a profession where, you know, a lot of the times it's quite a noble profession. There is that really horrible capitalist element in America where there are really horrible doctors who will push prescriptions that you don't need on you for profit. If that doctor is taking home $400,000 and he's paying a lot of tax, that is far more respectable. That guy is not a bad guy. That guy is playing fairly. He's paying back into the system that he's benefited from where you are paying nothing into this rig system that you have created your immense wealth. And why I hate this, it's just so popular, especially in America, like entrepreneur is seen as something noble. And I've just never understood why this type of thing is glorified and why these people think they're so smart for being evil pieces of shit. But the only good thing about Robert is he's 75 years old now and I hope he doesn't get to spend most of his wealth that he's stolen from everyone else. So the thing about Robert here is I don't think he's like an idiot or a dumb person. He's just one of the few millionaires willing to say how he cons the rest of us. I made a couple videos on Mr. Beast and I speculated how much tax he might pay. Play that clip of that lawyer advising him all the ways he could just not pay tax if he put his money in different places, if he made charities, more LLCs and stuff like that. So I find all that stuff really, really cancerous. And obviously different economies enable this to different extents. America seems to be one of the worst, but the UK has it as well. You obviously need more government regulation, but stuff like the economy is purposefully so complicated that people don't even know how they would go about regulating this stuff. Like I'm someone who feels like I know the economy fairly well but i just learned a lot more about inflation this week in the us and how it's about raising interest rates so less people borrow money to create new businesses that create new jobs because they want people to enter the job market and be satisfied with lower wages so they're artificially doing this and acting like it's something that is one for one affected by global events and this is the type of stuff that robert is probably an expert in and that's why he always comes out on top. So I'm just showing you some like ridiculous stuff about like mindsets and people bragging about how they really cheated the system. Something very weird on billionaire mindset YouTube is pseudoscience and how much these people attribute their success to like waking up at 4 a.m., you know, having cold showers, drinking horrible drinks made up of loads of like different horrible vegetables and stuff. So I'm gonna play you a bit of this video and you guys might be aware of it because people have been doing like the one billion dollar routine. Now, honestly, I don't even know if this speech was originally done 
to tell people how to become billionaires, but an account called Be Inspired posted it called the $1 billion morning routine. Has 8 million views, obviously went viral. This is where everyone has been doing it from. Curtis Connor made a whole video where he tried to do this and see how it affected him. But I just wanna go through a couple of clips before moving on to the waking up at 4 a.m. thing that apparently will make you a billionaire overnight. I've all heard that if you could win the morning, you could win the day. One of the ways to doing it is to create regular rituals and routines so you don't have to think about what you need to do. And if you could set up routines and habits, especially early in the day, you could benefit from this science and momentum and create positive momentum as opposed to being reactive, like how a lot of people do. They, they pick up their phone the first thing and they start reacting and driving distraction and, and reaction as opposed to proactively spending time with self-care and self-love and having a vision and a direction for your day. After that, what I'll do is I'll go into the kitchen and I'll have a tall glass of water because you know we, we use a lot of water and most of us are very dehydrated at night. Uh, I'll take my supplements there. I, I take my probiotics, which is the big one, because your gut is your second brain. We talk about quick brain, you know, being your, your brain in your head, but you also have incredible amount of nerve cells in your gut and so I want to make sure I'm, that's being fed and and healthy so I take my probiotics um, then what I do is I do my breathing right I'm thinking about the things I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on here I'm thinking about excellence I'm thinking about hydration I'm thinking about oxygen whatever your breathing technique is I focus on breathing from there I take a shower and I it's cold shower and I do believe in cold therapy it works for me it helps me to reset my nervous system ice baths are, are very powerful because it helps like if you hit your knee you put uh, ice on it to reduce swelling and inflammation Cold therapy is a very powerful way of resetting your uh, your nervous system. And then I, I make a tea. And my favorite tea is like a brain tea. You know, it's a, it's a combination of goat cola, ginkgo, lion's mane, some MCT oil, and some other gems. Um, as I go through it, I sip my tea, and that's where I write my journal. And I'm a big believer in journaling. I've been doing it since I've been in college. So obviously, there is nothing wrong inherently with doing any of those things. Some of them sound quite healthy. Yeah, drink more water in the morning, maybe do some stretches. And you know, if you wanna clear your mind, write in your journal and do meditation. All of that stuff is perfectly fine, right? But the way that the entrepreneur community regurgitate this advice and that like it's vital for your success always makes me laugh. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is better for you than not doing it, but you know, everyone's different. I pretty much don't do anything in that video and I feel fine and nice and motivated to make YouTube videos and stuff. And I think a lot of people talking like this, especially rich people and telling us, it's like key to their success comes from that. These people think they are now like the societal gurus because in a capitalist society, we all think everyone who becomes rich is very good and they must know something we don't because we would be rich like them. So then they start telling us about taking, you know, all these smoothies and doing all this stuff and saying like that's how they became focused and got their wealth. And then people start to copy it. Then people start to say, well, that is the key to success. When it probably plays like very, very little and these people becoming successful. And another thing is people waking up very, very early in the morning. The Rock talks about doing it. Mark Wahlberg talks about doing it. And Tim Cook talks about getting up at 3.45 a.m. And I've actually found so many videos on entrepreneur slash billionaire mindset YouTube of people talking about how waking up at 4 a.m. is essentially like a new superpower. Like it unlocks things in your brain, which if you woke up at, you know, quarter to five or 6 a.m., you would never unlock. So I want to play you one video and then get into how this is like basically pseudoscience. And yeah, just like with the other video I showed you, it might work for some people. Some people might genuinely feel better about their life, be more focused if they wake up at 4 a.m. But I know for a fact, I wouldn't. To be honest, most days I'm not even in bed at 4 a.m. But let's take a look at this video and then get into some more, I guess, analysis of if waking up at 4 a.m. is even good for you, let alone is it the key to becoming a very rich and successful person? Why are successful people waking up at 4 a.m. and not a different hour? What is the secret behind it? Well, they know how their brain works and they take advantage of their brainwave states and brain chemistry. The brain produces electrical patterns often referred to as waves. When you're first awake, your brain operates at around 10 and a half waves per second. The range from eight to 13 hertz or cycles per second is the alpha stage 
It's been called the gateway to the subconscious mind. But when you wake up this early, you are between theta and alpha. The mind is capable of deep and profound learning, being fully aware and focused with an effortlessly calm mind. In other words, you don't have to work as hard. You are not thinking. You just relax into the moment. Another important fact known by all successful people is when you wake up, your subconscious mind is most impressionable and soaks up information like a sponge. Whatever you hear, see, or are exposed to in the first 20 minutes will affect you and set the tone for the rest of your day. This is why they meditate, listen to affirmations, and not checking their social media and emails so early. They choose consciously their tone of the day, being focused and positive and not being distracted. They choose to go to bed early and use the premature hours of each day in their own advantage. Successful people are aware of this and they use their alone time in the early morning to take full advantage of their brain's functioning capacity. You know what that video reminds me of? Because it might even be read by an AI voice, I'm not really sure, but they are getting pretty good these days. It reminds me of all that Sigma male stuff and how it's totally like anecdotal and just saying like random things that could be true but there's pretty much no evidence that they are true and also a lot of the things they're saying about you know the early morning calm and how there's just not much going on in the world couldn't you also say that you could stay up to like 4 or 5 a.m like why is it the benefit of just waking up early what about staying up all night and stuff part of the reason i stay up late is i do like the calm in the morning i do like that you know nothing going on in the world or where you live between like you know three four five I am. It is very nice, but again, why do I have to wake up at 4 a.m.? I need to make how to become a moderately successful YouTuber video and talk about the benefits of staying up all night. As I was saying, like, this video isn't based on anything. They're talking about, like, not going on your emails when you wake up. Tim Cook literally gets up this early so he can respond to emails and catch up, so that kind of throws a bit of a spanner into this video. And just watching this video, I just don't know how any of it relates to waking up at 4 a.m. specifically. And it also doesn't tell you what time you should be going to bed. Like if I go to bed at midnight, should I still wake up at 4 a.m. every day because it's calm and my brain can focus and it's like a sponge at 4 a.m. in the morning? Guys, do you know you can only retain information if you wake up at 4 a.m. first 20 minutes? Not that you probably wish you were dead and want to go back to bed straight away, which I believe would be about, I don't know, 95% of people. So like I said, I was just reading some articles because I was really curious, like, is this complete pseudoscience or is there actual health benefits to waking up at 4 a.m. every day? So an article by Inc. I just wanted to discuss quickly. Getting up at 4 a.m. doesn't work for most people for one simple reason. You're probably doing yourself more harm than good. Whatever the pluses of getting an ungodly early start to the day, they are far outweighed by the benefits of getting enough sleep. We can debate the pros and cons of waking up early, but the reasons for getting enough sleep versus the harm done by not getting enough, those things aren't up for debate. There are all kinds of scientific evidence that make it clear not getting plenty of sleep every night is a bad, bad idea. It make you feel lonely and hate your job. It can cause you to gain weight and it can increase your risk for Alzheimer's and even shorten your life. Sleep researcher and PhD Dan Gartenberg recently explained that we actually need to spend eight and a half hours sleeping or at least eight and a half hours in bed with the lights out since even those of us who don't suffer from insomnia spend some amount of time falling asleep and then some amount of time waking up in the morning. If you're setting your alarm for 4 a.m. you're going to spend eight and a half hours in bed then you need to be turning out the lights at 7.30 p.m. And then it just talks about all the social things you'd have to cut out to even try and do that. And then um, a small Harvard study showed that it doesn't matter whether you get up early and go to bed early or get up late and go to bed late. It does matter that you're consistent about whatever you do. Irregular sleep patterns turn out to cause all kinds of problems. Incidentally, the same study found that people perform better if they sleep during nighttime hours, which is to say between 10 p.m., and 10 a.m. If you're getting up at four, only about six hours of your sleep time will be during nighttime. And depending where you live, you may find yourself going to bed in summer, two hours before the sunset. So like I was saying, a lot of this like pseudoscience or these anecdotes for becoming successful in business are just passed down by billionaires and then become some sort of like accepted or sometimes even forbidden knowledge. And that because Tim Cook gets up at 4 a.m. and because he's insanely wealthy, that must be part of the reason that he's insanely wealthy. So I should do that too. 
and I should make videos about how it unlocks different parts of the brain, despite most of the evidence saying, it doesn't matter when you go to bed, it doesn't matter when you wake up, you just need to get a good amount of sleep, that will vary from person to person, that will vary based on age, but getting up at 4am and having a good night's sleep seems pretty incompatible, and at least with some of these videos, which often contradict themselves, as the Sigma male stuff often did as well, some of these people are advocating for a lot of sleep as well, which is nice to see that not all of them are incentivizing being an absolute maniac, because I have seen some Instagram pages, and I'm gonna make another video on this because I love it so much, you know the ones with like Tom Hardy and like Killian Murphy and Ronaldo quotes? And they're saying that like, every time you finish for the day, you should be staying up all night working on your side hustle. So obviously an insanely unhealthy lifestyle to promote there, but in this video, we're talking about the secrets of becoming super rich. So what we have so far is the mindset towards wealth, that we should all have a positive mindset towards it. Become insanely wealthy by cheating and not paying taxes. We should make sure to drink lots of water, meditate and drink loads of, I don't know, vitamin drinks and stuff like that. And we should also be waking up at 4 a.m. because it makes us more alert and our brain acts as a sponge at this time. So we got all that good advice in. Now there's one more video I wanted to show you because this made me laugh because although we have a lot of billionaires who are completely up their own ass and they're giving us loads of advice, at least a lot of the time, the advice they're giving, although in my opinion is very bad and is very immoral, I guess there's a point to the advice, like with that Robert guy, he is talking about how he played a rigged system and how he cheated to become insanely wealthy. But there's another guy called Daniel Locke who also talks about being insanely wealthy. And this video made me laugh a lot because it really is not saying much. He's basically outlining how rich people value their time over money, okay? But then he's talking about how it's better to earn a million dollars in a year than earn a million dollars in like decades and like, that's the point of the video. Like that's what he's saying is good. So please take a look at this because it's really funny. It's just a rich guy who's believing their own hype. And just because they've become moderately successful with wealth, they believe there's some sort of, like I said, guru intellect, but you're gonna laugh at this video because it's so, so stupid. Wealth is measured more in time than in just money. Let's say you make $25,000 a year. And let's say you work 40 years, how much money you've made? One million dollars. Now it's one million dollars a lot of money. Absolutely, you've made a million dollars. The question is, are you rich? No, why not? Because it took you 40 years to accumulate a million dollars, to make a million dollars. Now let's look at a different scenario. Let's say you still make a million dollars, but instead of taking you 40 years, you make that same million dollars, within 12 months, within one year. Now, are you rich? Yes, now you are a millionaire. What is the difference? It's the same $1 million. The only difference is the time that it takes for you to make it. And the cool thing is this, when you make your money in a relatively short period of time, guess what? Now you have more time to enjoy it. That's the only difference. That's why wealth is not measured in how much money you make, it's how fast you make that money. Rich people, we value time more than we value money. Poor people, they value money more than they value time. And that's why if there's something you know, with my Bentley, an oil change, or I gotta go do something or fix the car, I'm not gonna do it because it's not worth my time. My time is much more valuable. I have other activities that I could do that could bring in more money. Daniel Locke guy makes me laugh a lot because the video is titled How to Become a Millionaire, The Truth No One Tells You. He's basically outlining why it's better to earn a million dollars in a year than decades. Again, because rich people value time over money, but you're not telling me how that has made you rich. You're not telling me how you've become rich. You're literally outlining that, yeah, it's better to earn a million in uh, one year than 40 years. And yeah, the advice is, please. And then, yeah, and then at the end, going on to say, yeah, poor people are poor because they value um, money over time and rich people are rich because they value time over money. But again, please explain to me how this works. Like poor people, of course, value money more because you're not gonna pay for stuff you can do yourself because you might not have a lot of that money and you need it for basic necessities. Rich people, like he says, changing the oil on his Bentley or Bugatti or whatever, yeah, 
They don't need that money. So they pay for stuff to be done for them so they can enjoy their lives more. Really, really happy for you, Dan Locke. But this really hasn't given me any advice. So this just shows you how rich people are so up themselves and think because they're wealthy, because we live in a capitalist system that glorifies this stuff, they think they have something interesting to say. When in reality, I don't know how this guy committed as well. Doesn't seem like the smartest guy, so I don't really know, but he could be like a genius at the stocks or maths and stuff like that. But I just love how these people don't realize how despicable they are and how pretty much most of the world would hate them. And the only people who like them, this guy does have over 4 million subscribers, are people who buy into this entrepreneur mindset, this entrepreneur, I guess, affirmation and all this stuff about grinding to become rich and how if you have this certain mindset, if you know these secrets about business, you will become wealthy just like Daniel, Locke and other people. These people seriously don't realize how despicable they are and how much they are parasites on the rest of society. They feel like the poor are bad. Like poor people don't understand money. It's poor people's fault. They have the wrong mindset. Not like us who probably have big investments in our ideas in the first place like Jeff Bezos and we can prey on this system that is created by the rich, designed by the rich to benefit the rich. And you're an idiot if you can't exploit that too. And they do not recognize systemic problems of poverty. They do not recognize poverty cycles for them it's all a you problem. It's all a personal responsibility thing. It's all this Ayn Rand individualism. They literally do buy into their own BS about this stuff and don't realize that the reason they are so wealthy is through exploitation, stealing their workers' profits, and relying on this system of capitalist inequality where the winners can only exist because there are losers in society. We take that on a global scale with different countries, for example, more developed Western countries, they only exist with their insane wealth because they exploit poorer countries and they can only exist in that state of wealth because of exploiting poorer countries. The main thing to remember is most billionaires either inherit their wealth, start off from a pretty decent upbringing, middle class or higher, and they play a rigged system to become insanely wealthy and they maintain that wealth through capitalist exploitation. Fundamentally, if you're a decent human being with good morals, you're never gonna become a rich person because that would go against everything you believe in. I couldn't become a billionaire, for example, because that is so gross to me, I could never be that person. But it's clear that so many people, maybe the majority of people, have been brainwashed by neoliberal capitalism where they think these people are good. You should aspire to be like these people, you should listen to them, you should learn from them, you should glorify them because at the end of the day, isn't that the freedom capitalist gives us? A small minority of us can destroy the rest of the population and exploit the rest of the population for insane wealth and make their own situations worse and not reward them for their hard work. That was just a little insight into entrepreneur slash billionaire mindset YouTube. I don't really know what I'm gonna title this video. It's been very noisy outside today, so I do apologize if you've heard any construction noises and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.